Okay, in part A, um, that information is pretty basic. Uh, most of you know, most of you guys know this kind of stuff, uh, but I just want to get that out of the way. Uh, this this part, part B, I'm going to go over a theory of mine uh, on how uh, long flakes are produced uh, with something called a spring theory. Uh, the spring applies to the tool that you're using and to the support for your workpiece. Uh, both of those work together, the tool and the support. So you've got um, you've got your workpiece, you've got something supporting whatever it is, and you've got the applied force. Okay, now I'm going to do a little close-up here. This is the uh, the edge of the workpiece. and this is a, a flake that's coming off okay now right at the moment that that fractures, that snaps, you hear that snapping sound while you're applying this force at that moment a lot of that force that you're applying <clears throat> dissipates in producing that crack so you get you get a reduction in force now sometimes that reduction in force is enough to uh, you know cancel almost all the force you're applying so you're only going to get a short flake just a small flake comes off <clears throat> and that happens a lot with simple hard hammer percussion where you just you might hit it with a hammer stone, a small hammer stone without much momentum um, and there's not much support but I won't get into that what I'm getting at is um, if you want a large flake or a long flake that you know continues as far as possible you need to apply a force that compresses like a spring okay it, as you apply the force there is some you know some storage of energy in the actual tool itself not only in the uh, not only from your hand but the tool is still the tool itself um, compresses or deforms and com and creates like a spring now when this crack initiates and it, you hear that snap that spring goes into action and maintains the contact between your tool and the platform so your 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 flakes not going to run away from you this crack you know it it travels extremely fast and this flake can get away from you when you're applying force but if your tool is like a spring it keeps up with this extremely fast flake travel and it allows more energy to stay with the flake to keep pushing it, keep pushing it until finally it starts to dissipate and you get you know you get that waviness at the end or sometimes you get it during the, in here too if if this spring is vibrating as it releases you get waviness in here too but again that's a theory I'm not sure if that's exactly what happens but <clears throat> it's helped me when I visualize what's going on um, so again uh, there's various ways I mean with a pressure flaker <clears throat> a lot of guys like to use a pressure flaker that flexes like an Ishi stick okay so that's kinda like a spring Right, it it deforms as you as you're applying pressure. This bows down this Ishi stick with your you know bit on the tool, and as it as it snaps and releases a flake, that flexing will help the flake or help the forces remove the flake and stay in contact with the platform. That's one way. Um, with percussion. 
Um, there's also a flexing, like with, with, with my horizontal punches. When I strike it with a mallet, same thing happens. It, it deforms, it builds up some force, it snaps, and that bowed tool uh, kind of flexes back and springs into action and follows that flake. Now with a, uh, with a hammer stone, it's a little bit different. The, the, uh, the stone itself has a lot of mass. Okay, and that mass uh, helps to, to maintain contact with the workpiece. But the most important thing is your support with your hammer stone. Now, if there's an opposite force here, now if that opposite force is acting as a spring, this heavy mass will compress the spring here on the support and you'll detach a flake and the hammer stone will follow that flake. But what's happening is this force here is acting this way to help maintain contact between your platform and your stone. Okay, so it's a little bit different. Now, here you you can have two springs. You can have you know, your support also acting as a spring at the same time as your flexible tool or your compressible tool. It can be acting in both ways. But with the hammer stone, the uh, stone doesn't compress very much. And a lot of times your force is not directly in, but it's kind of a swiping motion. So it, it, it pretty much just initiates the crack with a hammer stone. It's your support that creates that spring effect to maintain contact. <clears throat> okay. Now that went kind of fast, but uh, I didn't want this video to be really long. That's just, I'm just giving you a basic, a basic idea of of this theory I have about uh, springs and the way the idea of a spring can be used to explain how these tools operate. Um, now natural materials like uh, antler and bone they are natural uh, shock absorbers okay and uh, if you, uh, wood is also so that's why these are good for flint napping uh, I use plastic and and copper and these also have you know flexibility and spring type properties but they're slightly different than the natural materials with the natural materials on the initial force the tool deforms quite a bit okay so it, it takes longer to build up the force but what what really matters is what happens after this snap this crack um, the natural materials spring back into shape uh, antler and bone more so than wood and then help carry the forces uh, extremely quickly to follow that flake and follow that crack. Now when I started using plastic and copper I noticed that I didn't have to apply as much force and it could detach flakes much more cleanly so uh, I enjoyed you know switching over this way but I'm going to switch back over uh, to do a lot of videos on um, flakes removed with you know organic materials as well as the uh, plastic and copper okay I'm gonna wrap it up I'm not gonna make this long-winded and I uh, hope that helps that's it